just want to clarify, I'm sorry to interrupt, Rachel, I just want to clarify, you did a moment ago say a single market in services would be deeply uh, disruptive for the UK, that uh, we don't want it. Is that correct? Correct. Single market equals harmonisation in Brussels, equals the rule of the ECJ, equals the rule of a legal system which is not the common law system, which equals the destruction of one of the most valuable assets this country's got. It's just important that we have clarification. And so therefore the premise on the basis of which policy under successive governments uh, has been pursuing is erroneous. That is, basically, single, since the Single European Act, an attempt has been made to construct a single market in services, which has had a measure, many would argue, of success, not whole, but partial. You're arguing that that whole enterprise was a, a, a catastrophic mistake by the UK. The whole enterprise has been misconceived from the beginning. Whitehall totally blundered at the very start of this entire so you're process. you're saying yes to what I'm Lord saying. Cofield, I'm saying definitely yes. Okay. Cofield that's, that's into law, good. set the whole single market process away, they conned Thatcher over what it meant. Whitehall has never figured out what on earth is going on with this since okay. It babbles on about a single market and services, Rachel, and actually it would be damaging. I just wanted clarification of that point. Do, do carry on. Um, thank you, um, Chairman. So, um, not being part of the, the single market is, is not uh, um, something you would regard as a sacrifice. You think it is one of the reasons to leave the European Union is to leave the, the single market. I think that one of the great reasons to leave the European Union is that we end the jurisdiction of the ECJ and the Commission over all of these things, this whole regulatory regime which, of which the single market is the biggest aspect. I would remind you that the ECJ's and the Commission's definition of the single market includes the euro and the Schengen area. So being outside lots of parts well, of the single market already had this is not controversial. I think we've already had this uh, exactly. uh, discussion. So, so, the, so the real uh, question is, Cummings, we're not part of the single currency. We're not part of Schengen. We're so, not. So we're already part outside of, the two um, biggest single market those, projects those already, things. and but we'll we be adding have, to that. We do have, uh, Mr. Cummings, as you know, uh, uh, access uh, to uh, that that that, uh, that single market across the European Union for the sale of. of, of Goods and we are services. partially part of the single market. Let me now. just come back to um, one of your answers, and I'll, I'll wrap up in a moment, Mr. Chairman. Um, you said that um, other European countries would um, you know, want to do um, deals with us because they want to access, for example, uh, the financial services in London. Wouldn't it might maybe more likely um, that if we were left the European Union, uh, other countries might want to have some of those financial services uh, centred in their capital cities or in their financial centres rather than in London, Leeds and Edinburgh uh, where financial services is dominant today. Uh, and, uh, and, and instead of them wanting to do deals, for example, on financial services, they would want to take this as an opportunity to uh, take jobs from this country uh, uh, to, to their own countries. And there is a real risk that instead of the UK being the preeminent centre of financial services, across the European Union, you may find that Paris or Frankfurt take jobs and business uh, from um, London, Leeds, Edinburgh and other cities. Good luck trying to get Americans to leave Chelsea and move to Frankfurt. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. We heard this, all of the same stuff over the Euro. It never happened. Euro, London's mission has strengthened since we stayed out of the Euro. These scare stories, we've heard them all before. They don't mean anything. I, if you go and sit and talk, and, and talk to people at Goldman, I've talked to people at Goldman Sachs and these other banks about this sort of thing, and what do they say? They say privately, of course we've got to be in favour of the single market in public. We have to negotiate with the European Commission every day. They've got us by the balls. Of course we've got to go along with this. But do you think I'm going to move? Do you think I'm going to go and move to Frankfurt? Of course I'm not. The evidence that they have given both to this committee and in other forums making clear that in their view uh, there are benefits to their organisation from membership net is false. It's two, two different things. Yeah, sorry, I just want to be clear. Is that correct? I'm giving you very straightforward, simple questions. Is, is, it, is it false or not? It, it's, par it's partially correct, partially not. They do think that the current system they've got rigged with the European Commission is in their interests, and they are right in lots of ways, because they spread their money around Brussels very liberally, and they buy regulations that help them. But the idea that if we vote to leave, these Americans are going to leave Notting Hill and move to Frankfurt, I think it's for the birds. I just want clarity on that point as well. 
what you are saying is that they are using uh, cash uh, to bribe their way in Brussels to obtain regulations that suit their firm's interests. Did On I get a that? huge scale. Okay, so they're engaged in a, in a form of bribery to obtain the legislation that best suits them. Well, definitions of lobbying and bribery are always very difficult to draw clean lines between, aren't they? I see. And what you're saying is that that line is being blurred all the time by Goldman Sachs at best, and perhaps they're the wrong side of it. Is that what I'm saying? What I'm saying is everyone knows that Brussels is a deeply corrupt city. Everyone knows that the European Union is a deeply corrupt institution. It can't, its accounts are, con even if, it can't even cheat its own internal auditors well enough to hide the fact that its own accounts are dodgy. And every year it has to admit that. So I think, don't think that's a controversial position. I think we are finally, we're not quite in the way perhaps all of us expected, getting somewhere this afternoon um, with this evidence from Vote Leave, who, who are, after all, the official campaign uh, for um, those who feel that we should leave 